I'm Mr. New Jersey, and I'm quite obsessed with geography and culture. Having lived in the Garden State for 18 and a half years, and having traveled to every county in the state, I'm convinced that the traditionally used regions of North, South, and Central Jersey don't accurately reflect the way New Jerseyans live. For instance, why is Atlantic County lumped into the same region as Salem County, South Jersey, when it is clearly more like the other shore counties instead? Similarly, what do the incredibly flat and urbanized Hudson County and the comparatively rural and mountainous Sussex County, both of which are considered North Jersey, possibly have in common? The most common explanation I've heard, and that I myself grew up believing, is that South Jersey's culture is influenced by Philadelphia, while North Jersey's culture is influenced by New York, and that Central Jersey is where you can't tell which city has greater influence. However, this definition falls flat on its face when one realizes that almost all of Central Jersey is clearly within the New York zone of influence, and that in fact part of what's traditionally considered Central Jersey in both Union and Middlesex counties directly borders New York City. In fact, the only part of Central Jersey that is perhaps tipped more towards Philadelphia on the cultural scale is a very small area surrounding Trenton. But even in nearby Princeton, most of the residents I've heard from claim to be more aligned with New York. Mercer County is actually the only part of what most would consider Central Jersey that lies within the Philadelphia media market, while Ocean County, about half of which, depending on who you ask, is in South Jersey, is in the New York media market. I want to clarify that I'm not saying North, South, and Central is completely worthless. Because New Jersey is longer from North to South than it is from East to West, the terms are useful for indicating physical distance. As in, when a Camden County resident asks a Passaic County citizen what town they're from, and the Passaic County citizen responds, Ah, it's up in North Jersey. Probably haven't heard of it. What I do mean to say is that North, South, and Central Jersey mean virtually nothing when talking about culture, lifestyle, and values. For purposes of culture, lifestyle, and values, I propose a new method for understanding New Jersey, one that relies on the concept of regional poles, rather than exact borders. Regions are defined by a variety of factors competing for influence, with each factor contributing to the character of an individual town, city, or village. Regional identifications meld into each other over time and often overlap. For example, Trenton can be considered a fringe suburb of Philadelphia, in the same region as much of Burlington, Camden, Gloucester, Salem, and Cumberland counties, while simultaneously lying at the heart of an entirely distinct capital region combining parts of Mercer, Burlington, Hunterdon, Somerset, and Middlesex counties. On screen is a map of my proposed regions, though the lines and colors should not be viewed as exact. I'm merely attempting to give a rough approximation of where some of these regional poles kick in. For example, the light green pines box only gives a loose approximation of the areas which are influenced by the Pine Barrens ecosystem and lifestyle. The closer one gets to the center of that box, the more strongly those effects would be felt. While as one travels farther away from the center of the box, even once one leaves the box itself, those effects might still be felt, but in constantly decreasing amounts. And yes, I did provide a grid to the right showing one version of the North, Central, and South Jersey concept as a point of comparison. Now I'm going to go over the regions and what they're all about. I will be making references to regional political party affiliations, so for international viewers, know that the Democratic Party is generally the Liberal Party and is represented by the color blue, while the Republican Party is generally the Conservative Party and is represented by the color red. NJ's Northeast is titled the Gateway Region, a name I borrowed from New Jersey's official tourism regions because I liked it. In short, the Gateway Region is the section of the state that is directly across from, and is most influenced by, New York City. This is by far New Jersey's most urban, most diverse, most densely populated, and most democratic region. It also contains New Jersey's six most populated cities as of 2016. Newark, Jersey City, Patterson, Elizabeth, Edison, and Woodbridge. New Jersey's northwestern highlands are incredibly different. This is the part of the state that the Appalachian Mountains cut through. It is largely rural, mountainous, and conservative. It has a low population density by New Jersey standards. This is where much of the water that supplies the Gateway region comes from, and as such, the Highlands Water Protection and Planning Act imposes many rules in the region designed to help protect its environment. Just south of the Highlands region is a region defined by its proximity to Trenton, which I call the Capital Region. For history buffs, there's arguably nowhere better in the state than here. The Capitol Building, the Governor's Mansion, 
Princeton University, the first public schoolhouse in New Jersey, Washington's final Revolutionary War headquarters, the childhood home of the guy who started the California Gold Rush, and the site, now a state park, where Washington crossed the Delaware, are all in this region. Moving south along the NJ Turnpike, we'll arrive in the suburbs of Philadelphia. Camden is currently the area's largest city and economic hub, but it may not hold on to that title much longer because its population is in decline. Both the Capital Region and the Philly suburbs generally vote blue in federal elections. The Pinelands Region acts as a buffer between the Philadelphia suburbs to the west and the Jersey Shore to the east. The Pinelands is one of the largest forested areas remaining in the USA's Northeastern Urban Corridor, and it is the least densely populated part of the entire state of New Jersey. The region is predominantly conservative. South of the Pinelands Region is the Delaware Bay Wetlands Region. Its most distinguishing geographic feature is its swamps, which become more prominent as the state's elevation lowers near sea level. The region has one urbanized pocket centered on Vineland, but is otherwise a low-density, low-population region. In fact, the region has the only two counties in the state with fewer than 100,000 people, which are Salem and Cape May counties. In federal politics, the region as a whole is purple, because roughly equal portions of its population live in its Democratic, urban, and Republican rural sections. The Jersey Shore is split into two halves, a northern shore and a southern shore. The northern shore is culturally and economically aligned with New York, while the southern shore is aligned with Philadelphia. On vacations, residents of the Philadelphia suburbs tend to visit southern shore towns, such as Wildwood and Ocean City, via roads like the Atlantic City Expressway and Route 55, while residents of the New York suburbs tend to visit northern shore towns, such as Seaside Heights and Long Branch, via the Garden State Parkway. However, the terms northern and southern shores do not directly correlate with the terms north and south Jersey, because although the southern shore is in south Jersey, the northern shore is split between central Jersey and south Jersey. North Jersey contains none of the Jersey Shore. In federal elections, the Jersey Shore generally votes Republican, though a significant exception to this rule is the urban pocket centered on Atlantic City. The Shore region's largest city as of 2016 is Lakewood. Lakewood is New Jersey's seventh largest city, and the only New Jersey city outside of the Gateway region that has a population greater than 100,000. Speaking of the Gateway region, you can get to it from the shore by driving up the Garden State Parkway, meaning we've now come full circle. So, what do you think of my New Jersey regional analysis? Is it better or worse than the North, South, and Central Jersey concept? How could it be improved? I would love to hear your thoughts, so please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you found this video enjoyable or informative, please like and subscribe. See you next time.